So, hi everybody. Um, today I want to share with you one of the most uh, stressful things that I've had to go through during residency. And I hope that by kind of sharing my story and kind of conceptualizing and outlining the whole process, um, it'll be a much smoother and painless thing for you guys if you ever have to go through it. So my story starts in December <laughs> after a night shift. Um, it was my first night shift of many in a row, and so I was pretty delirious. Um, I had been able to sign up my patients, and I was in the residency lounge kind of cleaning up, um, grabbed my bag, and then I looked over my mailbox, and I saw this thin, you know, innocent-looking letter from the Medical Board of California. Um, and I'm like, sweet, it's probably my DEA. You know, I applied for that recently. <laughs> and that's the only thing I could think of official coming my way, even though it's not even from the Medical Board, but it's the only thing that I could, like, logic at the time, you know? So I tear this thing open and I get this scary looking letter. I don't want you to be able to read it and it's kind of fitting that you can't because I couldn't read it that morning either just because I was so delirious, you know, and was not getting expected to get blindsided with this thing. But I'll kind of walk you through it. So scary looking letterhead, they list a patient who I censored, um, a date I saw this patient, um, a complaint about that patient, some fancy legal code, um, asking me to write some kind of defense and then send my defense and a CD to some guy named Michael Gini at the Medical Board of California. Um, by the time I got this, it was like halfway through December. I think it had a trickle down through all of Loma and it gets me, you know. So I also had about 10 days to get this done, you know. Um, I do want to read one paragraph aloud to you because of how strongly worded it is and because it's got, you know, strong implications as well. Um, so it said, the complaint alleges the following. Dr. Guillaume treated the patient on the above date at Loma Linda Advanced Urgent Care for abdominal pain, seizures, and diarrhea. No examination was performed, no diagnosis made, and no treatment plan provided. The patient was discharged without proper care. You read that and you're like, ouch, you know? <laughs> we spend, all of us became doctors because we really wanted to help people. You know, we put thousands of hours into studying, uh, researching, volunteering and working all to reach this dream of getting to treat our fellow human beings you know this letter says i did the opposite of all that they said a patient came to me for help and i didn't touch this person i didn't do any kind of diagnostics or treatment plan for this person and i just kicked them back out into the the world you know which goes against everything that i've been working for for a decade ouch on a lighter note uh look where this happened <laughs> <laughs> this is reason number 73 why I won't miss urgent care when I go out into the real world. Here's a picture of me getting ready for urgent care shifts. <laughs> so now what? Um, I try to make a little game plan for you in case this ever happens to you in the three different steps. So the first step is don't panic. You know, we're all very type A. We live and die for gold stars. Um, we can be our own worst enemies, you know, if we get into our heads about this. So it's really important not to panic, and I'll tell you a bunch of reasons why you don't need to panic. Second, uh, get help. And there's so many different ways to get help. And finally, you just gotta keep on moving because, you know, life keeps happening while you have this whole thing moving. So what do I mean by don't panic? You know, this is a really scary looking letter, like why not panic? And the first thing I wanna point out is that anybody can file a complaint. So just because you're getting one, does not mean that there's weight behind it or that they're gonna, you know, have your license up right there. Um, and the, I'm not, I'm actually not even mad at this patient because I respect the process because doctors have so much power over patients. Um, patients come to us, trust us with their bodies, trust us that this drug we're telling them to take is gonna make them better and not worse. Um, so the medical board's hope is that if a patient ever felt slighted in some way, um, that they would have a place to have their voice heard, which is why they have to take all these complaints seriously. Um, second, you have nothing but time. It looks like I only have 10 days, but they're actually super flexible. They don't, the medical board, you know, they're just like government issue people, and you know, they're just, they'll just keep churning through the complaints as they come to them, and you can actually get all the deadline extensions you want. Um, I wanted to kind of talk you through the complaint process because I didn't understand it at first, and I feel like understanding something uh, makes it a lot less scary. So patients file a complaint, and then the medical board contacts you and says, hey, you have to defend yourself. You know, um, you look through the records yourself, you write your little response, and at the same time, the medical board gets the records from, in this case, Loma Linda, and reviews it themselves. 
a lot of the time, that's the end. You know, the complaint gets closed. If they think something's fishy or there could have been misconduct, they actually move on to the Department of Consumer Investigations, who does a much more thorough investigation. At that time, it still could be closed with nothing. If there might have been some misconduct, though, it becomes an accusation with a capital A, which is a lot more serious. And they take you, you have to go in, in front of a hearing, and then you get some kind of punishment, community service, um, classes on how to be a nicer person, whatever you did wrong, um, up to you know them taking your license away. Um, and why I wanted to highlight all this is that um, it doesn't stick to your record until it becomes an accusation, you know, or else patients could complain to you and just roast your license and everybody who looked you up would see all these complaints against you. They're not permanent if um, no wrongdoing was found. So that's another reason why you don't have to panic because you're a long way from letting it stick to you. Second part of my plan is get help. Um, the beauty about being an ER doctor is that we are not solo private practice. We work with a group of people. Um, so many of your colleagues and your bosses might be able to help you. Um, the day I got this letter, I remember wandering out into the attending parking lot and I actually ran into Timothy that day. Uh, I didn't really say anything, I just went, <laughs> you know, I, put the, I pushed the letter at him, you know. <laughs> and he immediately got me in touch with who I needed to be in touch with um, to make this better, which was risk management in this case. But just talk to your colleagues, um, talk to your, the chief of your service, and they'll get you the help you need. Where do you not go for help? The internet is your worst enemy in this case. Um, at the top, you can see how I tried to search for this. Trust me that I searched it every way possible trying to find a support group for doctors. I said, help for doctors with complaints filed against the Medical Board of California. Google, trying to be helpful, said, oh, did you mean how can I file a complaint against a doctor, you know? <laughs> How do I look up a complaint against a doctor? Who regulates doctors so I can complain about them? Or since I'm done ripping into California doctors, how do I get the Nevada doctors involved too? You know? The top search that comes up is how to file a complaint. With enough tweaking, I finally found one website that um, helped you. It was a legal team and they said, uh-oh, has somebody filed a complaint against you? Kiss your kids goodbye, kiss your stuff goodbye, unless you hire us to defend you from the medical board. So the only people who want to help you, uh, well, nobody wants to help you unless they want to take your money or they're trying to file a complaint against you online. So stick with your colleagues. I, I also want to point out that we're not alone. Um, as ER doctors, we're usually attached to a hospital. And that usually means we have the hospital's legal team on our side. Um, in this case, risk management for Loma Linda. Um, Kim and he got me in touch with this person whose only job it is is to help doctors write defenses against these complaints. You know, she had been doing this for decades. Her name was um, Deanna Walters. And she knew the guys at the medical board on a first name basis. That Michael Gini guy, she just writes him up and says, Mike, my boy Alex needs more time. <laughs> and, and she's like, how much time do you want, Deanna? You know, so I got about two months. I didn't need that much time, you know, because you don't want to just let this thing sit forever. But it was nice to know that there are people who know the dance and she like read over my defense and capitalized a bunch of letters and made it look all legal. So. We have really sweet backup. Lastly, I want to say keep on moving. Um, don't let this bog you down. Um, treat this like having a bad outcome at the beginning of the shift. If you just fix it on that one outcome, so many other patients that you see that day are going to be getting suboptimal care for you. You know, so pack this up in your little stress box and file it away, and then deal with it later. Um, and I don't mean that just professionally, but you got to keep moving personally too. Um, this is me taking Tiana Nova out for our first Valentine's Day together. Um, and this happened while the decision was still looming, you know, and if you would just focus on that uh, decision, um, you would be missing out on white components too. Two months later, I got another thin, innocent looking letter from the Medical Board of California. Ripped it open right away, and I got a much smaller, um, better looking letter basically saying, hey, we read up on your complaint, we reviewed everything. You're good, goodbye. Um, thinking about how many attendings I talked to, risk management, chart reviewing, writing this letter, having Tiana help me put it on letterhead, I could probably could have logged like 10 hours of critical care time. <laughs> and then they give me this little cookie cutter, you know, two sentence thing, but I'll take it, you know, because it's better than anything else. <clears throat> so that was the end of that case. Um, about two weeks ago, I got another thin, innocent looking letter from the Medical Board of California in my box. And I said a bad word, and then I, I opened it, and it turned out it was just my license coming in again. <laughs> but I think it 
think I'm going to be saying that bad word every two years for a while now. <laughs> and then I just want to end with just a really good blueprint picture of us because we can't take a bad picture. <laughs> Thank you.